Just to add that in there and let's see if we if we're live yet guys let me catch this up here if i can let's see come on come on come on come on come on there it goes i got it now guys in there we go hey welcome welcome everybody welcome everybody to the live stream and uh, today's live study because I'm I'm not going to be here again this weekend, guys. Um, I'm just taking a break, uh, and I'm gonna we're gonna get to the point of the break here in a little while, and I'm gonna show you uh, the type of stuff that I just get tired of dealing with, uh, to be frank, um, and the the pressure, uh, not really pressure. It is what it is. People people just just uh, they can't stand the truth, but. Either way, what we're going to do today is we're going to start off with some good stuff, okay? Uh, we're going to start off with the second notice that I'm going to send um, uh, Chief Judge Shelley D. Dick. Uh, I have reports of, of news reports and news agencies stating that uh, certain uh, courts have already uh, uh, rescinded their their mass deal. It's just, it's just a matter of time, folks. They can only keep up the charade for so long. Uh, administrative orders and things of that nature that come from uh, these judges do not pertain to us. That pertains to employees of the government. Uh, these are uh, citizens of the United States, uh, which is in the District of Columbia. That stuff doesn't pertain to me. And we'll talk about that. Uh, we'll talk about that idea. But the first thing I want to do is let's get to Psalm. Let's do Psalm 15. Let's do that. Okay. Let's do Psalm 15 and read that. And then we'll start off with a little prayer. A Psalm of David, Father, Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? Only he that walketh uprightly and worketh righteousness and speaketh the truth in his heart. Hey, listen, you know, we everybody goes around looking for Zion, Jerusalem, and you got a whole sect of people right now, uh, whether they be the, the, the white Bertrand Comparais or the black Hebrew is, Israelites think Jerusalem's a real place. They don't know where the, my, his holy hill is, and he, he, he never minced any words about it. And what they do is they go about bite, biting, hating each other, and they they become accusers and uh, disassemblers of the brethren, right? And they have no idea what they do because it's it's just it's their natural state, right? Is to hate one another, because in in man's natural state, he sees somebody else's skin and judges the book by the outside of the cover, right? Instead of see, opening the pages and seeing what's within. Uh, and that's that's man in his natural state. He that backbiteth not with his tongue, nor doeth evil to his neighbor, nor taketh up a reproach against his neighbor, and whose eyes a vile person is contemned, but he honoreth them that fear Yahuwah. He that sweareth to his own hurt and changeth not. So that 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 little part right there, that means uh, that even those all the accusers are on the outside, bapping, 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 bapping. You change not. You know you've got a you got a one track mind. You're in unity. Uh, you've got a goal in, in sight, and everybody around you is just white noise. He that putteth not out his money to usury, nor taketh reward against the innocent. He that doeth do these things shall never be moved. And that's that unmovable mountain, right? And that's the seed uh, that, that's been planted on good ground. This isn't sour ground. And so the uh, overarching agenda of society and the propaganda is to make us hate. OK, uh, I struggle with this, this welling up of anger inside and everything else all the time. I'm fighting it back, always fighting it back because love defeats hate. It just does. Now, it's like in, in very simple terms, the mother who fears for her daughter's life uh, through fear will not turn the car upside down uh, to get her. But out of love can flip the car upside down, rip teeth out of a line, whatever, you know, yank, yank the child through steel to get it from a, a, a grill or whatever. All these ideas. So let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, uh, thank you for anointing me with this message. And let the seed continue to fall on good ground. Let us have a great fellowship today. And let my, my, my will continue to decrease. The natural man's will continue to uh, uh, decrease and, the, and yours forever increase. And let thy word not return unto thee void, but let it accomplish that which you please and prosper in everything and everywhere that you send it. In your precious son's name we pray. All these things always, right? Uh, so we'll start off with some good things. Let's... uh. Do this together. Uh, 
And y'all got to tell me that, guys. I didn't have the screen share. Y'all know y'all got to tell me these things. <laughs> but that was Psalm 15. All right, so let's read this together. I'm going to blow this up, guys. Give me a second. All right, can y'all see that? Let me see if I can blow that up for y'all. Tell me when y'all can see that. Can we see this now? Okay. So, all right, guys. So, first off, uh, let me say hello to everybody. Uh, Kurt Bunch, Chandra, Giggle, Stealth Tops, No Rain, Dylan Becker, Flat Jacks, Jason Owen, Stealth Ops, um, Amanda, Peppermint Patty. Uh, yeah. All right. Goes uh, 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 Road Gervatis, More Than a Flame. Uh, Kelly Will Hey, Kelly. Hey, Sister Kelly, I hope y'all are doing good over there in Mississippi. Miss seeing y'all. Outside of uh, society, all chemistry, sprouting fam, omnicolor. Hey, guys, y'all know, you know, you know I love y'all. All right, so this is the second. Uh, so this is the second, and I'm mailing this tomorrow. I may make a couple. Hey, Ange. Uh, hey, hey, Sister Ange, light in the darkness. You want to do one more click? Okay, let me see. All right, how about that, guys? All right, so uh, we're going in for this. Uh, uh, the second, this is the second uh, notice. Now this is more formal. You'll notice I've gotten more formal in this one. And the third, if it takes third, third and fourth uh, notices inside the administrative process, we'll be, we'll be we'll get more and more formal. All right, um, and uh, so I want to tell people right now that. Uh, so one of the things that we're going to uh, figure out and learn to do is use their system against against them. I accuse myself of being one of the people, right? Uh, well, I, I've accused myself, okay? I've accused myself. That's what their whole system's built on. If they walk in the court and tell me, King George, uh, we never broke away from King George, you're a slave, Brandon, well, what, what does the system matter then? Uh, but I, I highly doubt that they do that. But anyway, this is a tactic for, by, from Bill Turner that I learned that just go ahead and uh, claim that you're one of the people and it's up to them to disclaim it. Okay. Uh, so nothing, nothing, nothing in the constitution pertains to me. Uh, so first off, let me, let me state that unequivocally, uh, nothing in the constitution pertains to me because I'm one of the people I've delegated, uh, the authority of the limitation of government. Okay. I being a, a self governing man am sovereign little s sovereign. Okay. I have something. I have something within me that is greater than all the stuff written on paper. Okay. All right. So let, let's 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 see how we go about this, guys. To the office of Chief Judge, U.S. District Court, and and Shelley D. Dick. Okay. So first off, I have I, I'm writing the office, and I'm writing the private woman. Okay. That's why there's two titles there. I don't I don't um, uh, one of them's the agent, and one of them's the principal. I know I named both of them. The second attempt of remedy by one of the people, Brandon Albert Sibley, here hereafter known also as me, myself, or I, seeks a meeting of the minds and to find rem remedy to the injury and trespass I incurred at the hands of U.S. Marshals Michael Attaway and Pearson on October 6, 2020, at 777 Florida Street, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Uh, he who first offends causes the strife. Whereas Chief Judge Shelley D. Dick, it is not my intention to argue, create controversy, or create create hardships for any living, breathing man or woman. What I wish now, now, now make make no mistakes, folks. The word "wish" itself has a little bit more power. It, it it's command. Okay, y'all go look up the word "wish" in, in legal definitions. Right. What I wish is to record my claim against. So, and you'll remember this when uh, upon the king's wishes, right? So, when the king wishes something, he commands it to be. Uh, just a little little nugget. Uh, what I wish is to record my claim against those who would de deny me life, uh, freedom, and property. Against such, there can be no rulemaking. Instead of being secure in my effects and my property, I was de denied access at a federal building due to the citing by U.S. Marshals. Marshals that an administrative order number 2020-8 was in fact law. 
Okay. Genesis 2, 6, and 8. But there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. And there he put the man whom, whom he had formed. Inspiration in, into, and speedily uh, breath. The word was originally used of a divine or, or supernatural being and the sense and part of truth or idea to someone. So to deny the life-giving air into my lungs, which powers the function of my brain, is totally against conscience and reason. Reason. So with that, I want to I want to go back to this. I want to state this right here. All right. So what we have in, in in the world today is people who can't see correctly. And what we're going to do, we're going to put all those people in a class. Okay. Uh, so what we're going to do, people who live holy in the intellect deny that man can know anything about God because they do not have a quickened faith. OK, it, 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 it is the letter that killeth. It is the spirit that giveth life. It is that which quickeneth. Right. It's what gives animates. It's the light that lights the life of men. This knowing this inner knowing. OK, this comes from. Uh, so Brandon, five years ago, could not even uh he could he couldn't even ascertain or even come close to the thoughts that happens in Brandon's mind now today. Um, uh, and uh, there's a there's a spiritual deal that goes on uh, even in my dumbest mistakes that I'm guided somewhere else. Uh, and, and sometimes it's above me. And I, I recognize that and my reason uh, can't always deal with it. It's like synchronicity, the synchronicity that, that always happens. This knowing rise rises even above the reason faculty of mine and enters into the arena of loosing and binding. Okay. And there we go. Thinking and manifesting, right? What shall, shall be bound on earth shall be loosed in heaven. What shall be bound in heaven shall be loosed on earth, right? This idea back and forth, this manifestation of light and consciousness, this, uh, uh, what is hidden shall be revealed. All these ideas that most miss out on in their life. Or, or, or break it down this way. The fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Well, why did it avail much? Because he first what? He put it into action here and it manifests in reality. So we wanted to talk about that that one one deal right there before. Um, but what I wanted to do is, is, is the quote today. The quote that we pulled today was from Kikoro, right? Wise men are instructed by reason, right? And in, in, in instruction... Uh, and let's let's just go the men of less understanding by experience, the most ignorant by necessity and the beast, the beast. That's that's the total beast are by nature. So let's break this down. The letter killeth the litera, the grammar, the letter of the law. It is the spirit which gives life life. A reason reason is the intellectual faculty that ado adopts actions to ends. So by reason, I can ascertain the risk and the reward of a certain deal, and I can see the results around me. I don't have to actually experience pain of hot or pain of cold or pleasure or, or, or any of these ideas to actually tell by reason the mind that I, I don't want to do something or I do want to do something, okay? Men of less understanding still rely on positive or negative reinforcements. That's the only way they learn, okay? And you'll notice we just step down a notch. Boom. We just step down a notch in understanding. Uh, yes, experience is a great teacher, but it's not the only te teacher. We have a, a prairie knowledge and then a non-prairie knowledge. Let's go do that together. Uh, prairie. Knowledge. And this is a prairie knowledge, right? It is is that which is acquired independently of a, of a particular experience, as opposed to posterior knowledge, which is derived from experience. So post means after. That means after after the 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 oven burnt you, you go, oh wow, well I don't have to touch the oven anymore. Well, the priory knowledge takes all your knowledge and your in your ability to uh, to build off that and says, oh, that oven's over there glowing hot. I think glowing red hot. My mind tells me that blue is cold, red is hot. You know, by, by, by most deals, I don't, I don't want to go touch that because it's one or the other. It's going to hurt, All right? So we have a prairie knowledge and a, and a posterior knowledge. Okay, so let's get back to the 
to deal. The beach which the defiled, the beast which the defiled whore sits upon, full of ad adulterations and blasphemies, and adulterate means to debase by mixing, right? And a lot of uh, cultures, uh, a lot of these these hate movements built on uh, I'm white and I'm Israel and I'm black, I'm Israel and everything run off this adulterated uh, deal, but they don't know what inequity is, right? So they'll go, inequity is just lawlessness. Well, no, it's it's way deeper than just lawlessness. Inequity is the mixing, adulterated, a, a non-uniform mind. That is the, the mind that is not in line with the Father. And it is to make corrupt. It is a world of inequity, shaping in sin, and only through the desire of the flesh, uh, nature, can they be excited? So the beast of nature is your masses, right? Your masses are the ones who, who who will walk up to you and go, oh man, thank goodness they gave us some football this year. Uh, we're gonna do we're gonna be okay after that. Well, the masses don't realize that an entire year of their life was stolen from them through COVID-19. They're just thankful for a piece of bread. So your next your next stage is the most ignorant by necessity. The ones that are by necessity is your largest group of people, okay? My brother fits in the beast by nature. The only thing that the beast by nature is going to do is that which feels good. The next group of people are the most ignorant and they are the most they are the most prevalent. And that's the guys who say I'm just doing my job. They're just doing their jobs. They're just automatons. They never really wake up to what's going on in the world around them. So what we have learned in this particular uh, study group is that we should be mindful for everybody in the stage that they are at. This is going to become very important here in a little while when we get past um, the, the chief judge, because we're going to talk about two instances that have transpired in the last, in the last few days uh, with me personally on my channel. And we're going to use these as, as growing points. Okay. Uh, men of less understanding by experience. So you still haven't, you haven't raised the mind high enough up out of the material world to see past what your only your physical eyes can see and your physical uh, flesh can feel. Okay. Then you rise into uh, the being able to be instructed by reason, right? Now you're starting to get into the faculties of mind, but there's even one higher than that. And that's when you get into the spiritual learning. And that is, that is when all things are brought into remembrance uh, by he who creates the heavens and the earth. And so we'll get back to the, uh, the deal. We'll go through this later if I got time. I'm going to try to get through this stuff pretty quick, guys, but there, I've got a lot of stuff to cover. So here we go. We're going to start again. We're going to start uh, right here with the negotiable instrument, okay? So uh, first off, what we're going to do is there's never been a negotiable instrument where I, I said I could I, I had, uh, subject myself to administrative order number 2020-8 with any anyone in that building. Without a negotiable instru instrument presented that I have agreed to, including the wet ink signature, there's no basis for administrative order number 2020-8 applying to me as I am not an employee of the federal government. The intentional misleading of the court and its officers in an attempt to procure my consent is a fraudulent misrepresentation. What is otherwise good and just, if sought by force or fraud, becomes bad and unjust. So when I say a fraudulent misrepresentation, is they are presuming that I, Brandon, am a United States citizen domiciled and planning to return to the District of Columbia and that I have forfeited my rights for privileges and immunities. OK, that is not the case. Brandon Albert is on the record stating unequivocally that I'm not a United States citizen. I am a, a non-resident alien. I am a foreign ambassador to Christ and I, I am a citizen of the kingdom of heaven on earth. Now, if they can't get that through their thick heads, I got to keep reminding them. OK, I have to keep reminding them uh, where, where I stand. Um, so justice, I wanted to get uh, speak to her humanity for a second. I said jo justice is showcases being blindfolded and holding the weights of balance. And if you ever notice, one of those uh, balances are, are tilted up high. And of course, some would say that's wisdom and understanding. But I'm going to go a step further which are these balances are uh, supposed to forever be tipped in the balance towards truth. Uh, the blindfold, the reason why the uh, justice wears the blindfold 
is to not allow her eyes to betray her intellectual faculties of logic and reason, nor to the administration of justice. So she's blind. She's not supposed to see whether you're white, black, green, poor, rich, whatever, right? But we know, we know that's not the case. That's exactly what, what we do today. All, whether big or small, rich or poor, must receive the same treatment or else discrimination has entered in the eyes and ears of the court. So what I am stating unequivocally in a very nice way that if she continues this route, she is actually, she is actually committing the crime that she's supposed to stop from happening. Okay. And that's the purpose of all this, an order. Uh, and we give a, a mandate, right? We're back into these mandates and precepts, right? Uh, and I'm not, so she gives me an order. It's got to be written to me, right? Now this, this, this general uh, order to everybody, that don't pertain to me. If you're going to give me an order or, or, or make a command towards me, you got to write it to me. Um, you got to do it to me. It's got to be between you and I to hold effect. And for uh, the consent makes the law. And only by, by consent can force enter the equation. So they've got it all upside down. They went force first. So that's fraudulent. That's at, uh, void ab initio. That's void from the very beginning. Okay. So we, we talked about that. And this is, the, this is the most important part right here. Well, one of the most important parts. The derivative power cannot be greater than the primitive. The power which is derived cannot be greater than that from which it is derived. So I, I read this, this Latin maxim. Uh, the way it pertains to me. That judge is up there dressed in character form. She's wearing all black because she's mourning, uh, but she's not going to mourn the death of this living man, okay? And I can promise you this primitive, which is not in the acting place of an office, is not going to subject himself to her or to him or anyone else acting in the place of office. And uh, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen today. It's not going to happen tomorrow. Uh, so, uh, the, that, you see, I put a little, a couple scriptures in here. Uh, I, I even put Marcus Tullius Kikro in here. And then, of course, I wanted to appeal at the end. Uh, I am I am a man of limited experience within the courts and the court's procedures, but by reason and logic so bestowed upon me by our creator, I can correctly ascertain the wrong must have a remedy, and it must. A wrong must have a remedy. Equity aids the vigilant, not those who slumber on the rights. I, Brain, and Albert Sibley, one of the people, have a moral duty to speak out against the fraudulent misrepresentation being carried out in your good name. When circumstances impose duty to speak and one deliberately remains silent, silence is equivalent to false representation. I, Brain, and Albert Sibley, wishes the court to provide evidence that the presumptuous claim being made against me that I am liable to Administrative Order Number 2020-8, which is being enforced by U.S. Marshals at the door to the courthouse, uh, and by what what authority does it apply to me, one of the people? Brain, and Albert Sibley. So that is where we are with that. This will get mailed tomorrow. I'm going to go proofread it and make sure everything's I like that I like it. I mean, there's always something I want to change, but I'm trying to keep it short and to the point. I don't want to send them a book. I just want to make it short and to the point. I don't, we abide in truth. You don't have to send books this thick. Uh, we, we abide in truth. I just don't think we have to do that. Uh, so I think I'm going to be short, continue to be sh uh, short and sweet. Well, that's sad. You need to call corporate, Carlos. All right, so let me let me get back on track and let us go to let's go to there. All right. Let's see. Hey, born again veteran. Wow, I missed you, buddy. So what'd they say, Carlos? All right. Oh, come on. All right, so let's get let's get let's get everybody going in here. Always in court, always in church. That's correct, uh, Parakey. A born again. All they said they were going to do was leave a note. Huh. Well, I don't know about leaving notes. <laughs> well, and what we have here, uh, so folks, let's talk about this, right? 
So let's discuss this uh, before we go any further. Um, so most of society during the year of 2020. Fix the screen, Brandon. What, what, what's going on here? Oh, here. How about that? There we go. Is that better? All right. Uh, so what we have, what we have is a is a society uh, that has continued to break down. Um, but what most people don't recognize is that the one thing that can't be replaced. And make no mistake, folks, uh, uh, the, the the thing that cannot be replaced is the time that's been taken this year. So this is one thing that I want to talk about too. Uh, so this is, it's vitally important. Hey guys, I have pulled out of YouTube fear porn, everything fear porn. I have I, I just, I just have, and it's not that I don't, uh, don't want to be in the know, but I already know. I know how the world of Caesar operates. Caesar's going to operate and take as much as you allow him to take. That's what he's going to do. That's what he, that's what he's here for. And we're supposed to go, no, Caesar, that's it. Back up. <laughs> so, um, and uh, so these ideas. So also while I'm thinking about it, while we're going on this idea, let's go to, let's go to this. Let's go to the scriptures. Some will depart from the faith. Let's read this together. Y'all ready? It is, uh, Sean. Sean, you're, you're 100% correct. You're 100 <laughs> so let's do this now the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils okay speaking lies in hypocrisy so one of the things that we do not want to be is this right here let's go get what a hypocrite is we're given the definition the scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do, but do not you after the works, for they say and do not. For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be born and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. And they love the ut utmost. And they are just nothing but, but hypocrites, 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 right? So let's go back. Oh, come on, Brendan. There we go. Having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Okay. So the hot iron represents force. So make no mistake about that. So if your conscience has been seared by outside authority, it's been seared by hot iron, by force. All right. And those are what we could call as like a teetotaler, right? A teetotaler walks around. They have, they have no fruit of the spirit left. They walk around beating people in the head with the Bible. A hey, matter of fact, Brandon, the, when he first, when he first woke up was a teetotaler, right? Went beating my wife in the head with the Bible. And you know what my, my wife did? She went, ah, you're insane. Get out of here. No, oh, everybody's going to hell. You're going to hell. You're going to hell. And you know, I was a I, my my conscience had been seared with a hot iron and I was a complete hypocrite, you know, and make no mistake, guys, when you're like this, you start forbidding to marry, you start commanding to abstain from meat, meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them, which believe and know the truth for every creature of God is good. Nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. Now here in just a second, I'm going to do a lesson for everybody who speaks in absolutes. All right. We're going to do that because I'm, I'm sick of hearing about it. For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. All right. Uh, remember, uh, Job said, uh, everything that I have feared has come upon me. Right. It's one of those things that we do. And Yahushua, the Messiah, always said, as thou hast believed, be it so unto you. Right. Because we have a lot to do with manifesting our reality. Of course, being, being reproved, manifest into reality, of course. Okay, all right. For bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is, and that, and that is what you become. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation. For therefore we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God. 
who is the Savior of all men, specifically for those that believe. These things command and teach. Okay. These are the things that we are supposed to command and teach. Who the living God is, where the temple is, where, where Jerusalem is. These are salvational issues, okay? Let no man uh, despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word and conversation, charity and spirit and faith and purity. Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. And listen, folks, this is the most important part. The Messiah's name is Yahushua or Jesus Christ, whatever. I really prefer the Middle English, Isus, Asus, and not because it's Asus, because it still has the I in it. And one of the things that's been taken out of his name is the importance of I am. I am that I am. I and the Father are one. So the replacement of the I into the J has bit great significance, something that I'm coming into, uh, um, into understanding of. Neglect not the gift that is in thee which was given thee by prophecy with the laying on of the hands of the presbytery, but meditate upon these things. I, I, folks, you know, if, if I had a, a nickel for every time the Bible tells you to go seek, go, go within to get answers without, uh, I'd be a rich man. And how many times I was told uh, ignorantly that everything I was supposed to worship was on the outside. And I, I wasted three or four years searching an earnest truth. Where was my Messiah and where was my father? and never knowing that they were right there with me the whole time. Give thyself hold to them, that thy profiting may appear to all. Take heed unto thyself and unto the, unto the doctrine, continue in them, for in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and also them that hear thee. So, you know, today uh, is the day of salvation, and you must go at it with fear and trembling, right? Uh, and, of course, here, here Paul got, says it again. Save thyself and them that hear thee. All right, so this is this is the doctrine that has surpassed. Uh, this is the whole point of the Hebrews going from the hey folks. There's a reason it's called the Old Testament going into the New Testament, right? Uh, uh, he who is at comes after me, me is preferred before me, right? So he who comes after me is preferred before me. This is a type. Now it starts with Moses and Joshua. Moses never gets to the wilderness. Joshua, who is a type of Christ, comes in, takes the, the children of Israel uh, to the deal. Okay, um, by the law came Moses gave the law, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. All right, so grace and truth is again the definition: I am the way, the truth, the life. And once you get these uh, foundational uh, um, concepts, logos down pat. Nobody can take them from you. So, look, I worry about no thief or robber coming through and breaking through and stealing. They can't steal these treasures. These treasures are in an in uh, uh, um, unbreachable room. They're in that closet closed, and only the Father and I and the Messiah can, can, can dwell there in that secret tabernacle, and nobody can take it. Um, so what has happened here has transpired is the polarization, brother. So I'm going to show you the first one right here. And first, we're going to work with Brother St. Joe. All right, so Brother St. Joe made a, made a comment the other day, and I want to read this to y'all, and we're going to go through it, and I'm going to show you the two different types of people. All right. A lot of people probably unsubscribe because of your unbiblical stance on food. Although I don't agree with you on your interpretation of eating laws and other things, I still very much appreciate the information. Shalom. So my reply back to St. Joe was this. So you just how polarized it is. It proves the point I have been trying to make. Everyone wants to be a tyrant in some way. Listen, folks, if your primary goal is to force somebody else to submit to your way of thinking, you're a tyrant. Okay. You still haven't you still haven't opened up the heart to brotherly love. All right. That's just the, that's a fact. I can't I can't make anybody see that as the truth. Right. Go read Matthew five and then compare that to what you feel in your heart. Are you praying for your enemies? Are you praying for those who wish to do harm to you? Are you really do you really feel that within or are you just with your lips uh, honoring him, honoring him that way, and your heart is far from him. I'm going to tell you, folks, this is a lot of change to do. But I'm I want to give I want to give a lot of credit to St. Joe right here because it, it's funny. Uh, it's not I'm not funny, but it it goes to prove that there are people who who can do it, and St. Joe can. 
And I said, woe for offenses. They must come. Much love, St. Joe. And just like I have every right to disagree, you have every right to do the same. To still break bread with one another and not sweat the non-salvational issues is love. Much love to you and yours. And look, St. Joe has has the uh, the ability to laugh. You know, humor humor has a, has a way of breaking things apart. Break bread for sure, as long as it isn't catfish or swine. As you have believed, be it so unto you. All right, so first, first what I want to do is I want to dispel uh, the, the whole, um, if it has scales, it's a good food. It's not a bottom feeder. Okay, I'm going to dispel this in a way uh, that can't be dispelled anymore. And then I ask somebody, just go ahead and prove to me anything different. Well, so what people do that don't fish and don't hunt, they got, they've got they got these ideas in their head. Well, I'm going to tell you two fish that have scales that I would never eat. And that's a mullet and that's a shad. All right. That's because every time I cut the mullet and the shad open, what comes out of their guts? Anybody know? Well, we'll read it. White mullet have similar similar food habits to the striped mullet consuming algae and tiny animals and Deatrice glean from the large amounts of sand and mud that they consume. Every time you cut open a mullet or a shad, they've got scales or even a nasty old carp. I won't eat a carp neither. It's got scales. Um, you cut those fish open, all the mud and all the garbage. They're, they're true bottom feeders. So what I had, and we're going to go see it. We're going to go see this. after. St. Joe comes this guy, Macchiata Ch Chihuahua, all right? And he's going to tell me about the filters and everything else. And he's going to, I told him, you know, that's, that's, that's fine. That's great. That's great. But he didn't know when to stop, right? So I'm going to prove right now, right here, that there's catfish with scales that you're not supposed to eat because they're, uh, they're, they're bottom dwellers. Now let's, let's look at it. This is the scientific name, Hypostomus plecostopsimus, self-end catfishes, ingenious pertigidilis, whatever. Call it the Nemo effect. The armored catfish is a popular aquarium fish, attracted many aquarists because it scrapes algae from the bottom and the sides of tanks. And it's got scales on it. All right, let's go to the next one. This is what I eat. It don't have any scales. But let's see what it is. Blue catfish are voracious eaters. They consume other fish, crustaceans, and even other catfish. They outcompete the native species for both habitats and food. They eat the same plants, insects, fish, and blue crabs that native fish depend on. And then they eat the native fish too. I, let me tell you something, folks. I have cut open catfish and found largemouth bass in them. I've cut open catfish and I've, I've, found, I've, I've found all rats. Oh, it doesn't matter. But the one thing I have never cut open a blue catfish and found is mud or poo. But yet I've got people that tell me what they eat and they've never done one. Okay. And then you have the flathead, young flathead catfish. Now, the purpose that I'm doing this, folks, there's a reason why I'm doing this. Okay. We're going to go back to it in just a second. The flathead, the flathead catfish, you can't ca hardly catch on anything but live bait. That's it. That's about the only thing you can catch a, a flathead catfish on. So let's c continue, uh, stop that debate. And we're going to go back over here to this right here. All right. So everybody in the world has something that they are polarized about. And when they're polarized about it, they, they make it their point to disassemble, right? That's what they do. They go find a reason to divide the brethren. Over something that has now now Marcus Macchiani could have just went on and, and done his done his day, but I'm going to show you guys what ends up happening. I just let him get the last word uh, word in, and I just I go about my business. I let him get the last word in. He tells me tells me all all his different interpretations, and that he knows that all scaled fish are good to eat. Listen, folks, whoever wrote the stuff in Leviticus. It doesn't matter to me. Okay. Here's the problem. I do not have my conscience seared with a hot iron. I have lived in this culture in Louisiana my entire life. I was raised eating crawdads, seafood, catfish, largemouth bass. I ate speckled trout. I ate all the stuff that the land gives to me. Okay. 
and don't have any issue with it. I even had another video to upload to show y'all how to skin a 50 pound catfish that I caught Friday. But you know what? I'm not doing it. I'm just not going to do it. I don't, I don't want to hear the crap that comes from it. Right. So, and this comes to the next point. This comes to the next point. You know, wise men are instructed by reason. So if you don't have the experience of actually cleaning, cooking, or anything else, or messing with these fish, and yet you go, they're filters, they eat turds, but yet you don't even know that there's many, many, many scaled fish that are bottom feeders, right? You have no clue. Well, what you become is an extreme hypocrite. And so anybody speaking about food issues and still going to the local grocery store and buying rice or or Reese's peanut butter cakes or anything that they buy that's a processed food and talking about eating clean food, they better get on down the road. That means they're an extreme hypocrite. The point being is that from my life, my point of stance and my mind, I have no issue with eating a catfish. I have no problem with eating catfish over the scaled fish. Why is that? Because by reason, when I gut the fish, I know which one's a bottom feeder and which one isn't. And these are things, man, that we have to learn to rise above and just leave alone. Well, and it's true, armchair quarterback. Yeah, it's, it, well, well, hold on, and we got one more. We got one more, because I'm going to get this stuff off my chest before it, it, it causes a cancer. So what's happening here? And we're going to go over here to, to this now. All right, so what's happening here? No, we're going to get through it, Heather. I am going to take a break. <laughs> and Saul became Paul, right? Well, he who's preferred, he, he who comes after me is preferred before me. Paul was the spiritual man. Moses is the mediator between God and men. The Levitical priesthood is a shadow of things to come. All right, We are of the class of Melchizedek. If you want to be in the Levitical priesthood, by all means, more power to you. If you think you are going to live your life as a teetotaler and suck all the joy out of life, you can't do that. If you if you enjoy vegan food, do it. More power to you. I enjoy. I, I, he, 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 he who believes in his mind creates his reality. Do y'all do y'all not understand it? If I was out there doing something that I thought was against my conscience, well, I'd be totally responsible for that. My, my rights and duty to man and God is to love him with all my heart, mind, and soul unified and to love my neighbor as myself. Well, I can't love my neighbor as myself if I'm always accusing him of doing something unholy. It's, a, it's impossible. If I don't give him the same respect and, and common courtesy that I would want, how is that love thy neighbor? And I'm going to show you the scriptures that people are using to, to do these things. And, and it's Ephesians 5.11, right? Reprove the works of darkness. How many of y'all know what reprove the works of dark, darkness mean? Reprove. And we, what we have is reprove is, the, is the, to accuse and blame, disapprove, reject. You're supposed to reject the works of darkness. You're not supposed to sit around slandering your brothers all day long. Uh, you know, it's it's one of those things where I see in a polarized world where we are unable, unable to just disagree to disagree like me and Brother St. Joe. Hey, listen, I, I respect Brother St. Joe way more now. Well, I'm going to tell you. Uh Pepsi was the one I found first. What was that? Oh, that's probably nasty stuff. I don't even want to talk about that. Well, we're always on the law. I disagree with that. There's law, there, there's there's law, there's law, and then there's there's misinterpretations of, of Bible. And then there's what the scribes and the Pharisees added to the Bible. And then it's man deciding. It's just like, hey, listen, so let's do this. All right. So it tells you in Leviticus that you should only eat scale foods and all unscaled food, uh, unscaled fish 
are bad. Well, we just read there's three scaled fishes that are bottom feeders. Okay. One of them with scales on it. It's just, it's just unbelievable. Uh, when you get to those ideas back there that there's, there's certain rule, there's certain reasons why the, the new Testament makes, makes clear distinctions between the difference between the Levitical priest priesthood, which is Hebrews seven. Come on guys. I mean, I don't know how people can't read this stuff and not see uh, what the purpose is. So the Hebrews seven states unequivocally, right? And here it is. If therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, let's read it together. We're just going to read it together. Hold on. If therefore perf perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law, what further need was there that another priest should rise after the order of Melchizedek, not be called after the order of Aaron? For the priesthood being chained, there's made a necessity of change also of the law. So if you want to talk about any law that is no longer valid or applicable to anybody, it comes from the Levitical priesthood. Now I have I'm a full full effect uh, that the Ten Commandments stand forever. Everybody knows that. But either way, the you must understand this whole Melchizedek idea, and it is because he who is after me is prefer, preferred before me, and everything that is of the literal, uh, the letter. Let's do that. Everything that is of the letter killeth. The litera, the grammar, the letter of the law is the spirit which gives life. So he who is preferred before preferred before me came after me is after Edom, after Esau, the hairy man, comes the spiritual man who said who goes, okay, you know, this little this little bit of issue that you and I that don't agree with, you know what? You're still my brother. That's that's spiritual growth because these issues are non-issues, right? And I'm gonna show you another instance of that now. I'm going to show you another instance of that now. The whole purpose of doing all this is not to speak about uh, Brother McKeezy, but it's to speak about the certain bent of mind that is happening in this overpolarization, right? So what we are trained to do is hate each other, right? That's what we're trained to do is hate one another. Well, why would we fall into that trap of hating, hating one another and doing dishonor to each other and always remaining in dishonor? We have to get out of that. You know, we, we just have to break that spell that's been cast over us. We really do. We really got to get out of that. So let's do let's do the last one. And, I, and listen, I'm not even well, it's going to show you his name. So somebody and I usually don't even do this, guys. So listen, I will state it. State this. Nobody go to this guy's channel and give him a hard time. He gave his own self a hard time and finally stopped talking. And the reason for that, I went to his channel is that I wanted to, I wanted to see what he had said about me. Somebody told me that he said something about me. So I didn't even go over there and ask anything about me. I didn't even ask him to remove the channel. All I did was go watch a few of his videos. Now what we'll do, we'll do like this. We're going to look at his videos. Okay. Now what I want to, I want to show you guys is Watchman D correcting the heresy, rebuking, shattering lordship, salvation, exposed, false teacher, exposed, shattering, Chumpy the Orange Clown, Rebuke Them Sharply, Joe Embriano, Larry Gators, uh, Donald Trump, Eric John Phelps, John Trump with the fear. Every single video this dude makes is on somebody else. Okay? Every single one. Perry Stone, every video he makes is about somebody else. Charles Lawson, Jeffrey Doherty, and I'm in here somewhere. Okay? I'm in here somewhere. I, I didn't go watch that, but what I did was go watch. You can see I watched a few of the videos. And what I saw was something that broke my heart. That's true. All right. And what we're going to talk about is what I did. So I wanted to bring something to his attention. Right. And I'm just going to read this to you guys. But I want to show you the difference in somebody who's already made a decision uh, to be ugly uh, when he didn't hear me out in the first place. Right. Uh, rebuke the works of darkness. So what is that? Rebuke, reprove. Right. Uh so there's only one place darkness can reside if we allow it, folks, and that's right here. If you continue to allow this, this, if you allow the Antichrist to sit in the temple, temple of the Most High, declaring himself that he is the Most High, when you know what the seven fruits of the Spirit are, seven fruits of the Spirit, folks, if you're doing something opposite than the seven fruits of the Spirit, then you're in darkness, guys. Is that external to you, or is the first place we judge in the house of God? Well, it tells you. 
Where's the first judgment? Here, we'll, we'll do it together. Judgment comes first to the house of God. First Peter 4, 17. So let's read it, right? First Peter 4, 17, right? So let's read this together. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. Well, guys, where's this house of God? Where's this house of God at, guys? Oh, you think it's a brick and mortar building? No. And if it first begun at us, what shall be the end of them that obey not the gospel of God? And if the righteous, the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? And, and I'm just, I'm just telling you guys, and this it's the way that I come at this uh, brother Carl Roberts, which he don't think he doesn't believe I'm his brother, but we're going to rebuke him anyway in, in love. And what I do is I tell him here, I, I just show him. But you know what he does? And y'all can go read this stuff if you want. I don't care. The point, the point is, is, and you'll see how I end. I say, take care, Carl Roberts. I pray that this message finds you. A friendly and actually well thought post has been made to you. It is my hope you scroll through your YouTube ch channel and ask the simple question: Why do I spend so much time worried about everyone else? Now, of course, there's 21 replies here, guys, and we'll we'll get off his channel now. There's no point in in making it anything else. Uh, let me let me change that right there to this. How about that? The purpose of me showing you that is that in 21 messages back and forth between the two of us, uh, Brother Carl Phillips, uh, Carl Roberts, or whatever his name is, I invited him on for the live stream tonight. I actually started the live stream in hopes that he would come on. He never, he, he didn't want to come. Uh, the point, I was going to give him his opportunity to openly air his grievances towards me. But what happened is, is that because I didn't become degenerate and slander him like he slandered me and everything else and start doing ad hominem attacks, well, at, at, the end of the, at the end of the messages, he realized that everything that he was claiming that I supposedly did wasn't true. And so he had spent all that time wrapped in his animosity and his anger. All right, so let's do this together, too. And this is this is this is a good little study we're doing, right? So, Proverbs twenty four forty three. Let's do that. Twenty four. Ah, no. What the? What was it? Twenty four thirty four. No, I must have messed up. But anyway, let's do Ephesians 5.11, because this is one of the things that he, he he quoted to me. Let's do Ephesians, okay? All right, so be, the, be you therefore followers of God as dear ch children and walk in love, okay? So before we get any further, we're, re remember this, we're walking in love. Hey, let me tell you the hardest thing that I do in my life has been changing from a teetotal, teetotal psych, psychopathic, tyrannical uh, fear based man into a man that actually loves other people whether i agree with them or not i love them and when i go down at night i pray for my enemies and that's been the hardest thing i've ever had to do is not just say it but actually mean it and let let's let, listen folks getting to that mindset up here is one that takes and moves the mountain. It moves the mustard seed. You're now in the kingdom of heaven and it's at hand. It's not coming. It's not here to come. That day has happened. And what has happened on that day, the, the world, the veil was ripped wide open. The apocalypse happened and you revealed who the beast was. Well, folks, you're, you've been the beast. You've been the adulterated whore that's right on the fornications of all the world. Your love was the merchants of the earth and all these ideas, and you wanted to just blaspheme and, and make vain the word of God, which is the, the temple built by not by man's hands, and we do this over and over again. And then we go, oh, man, it's somebody else's fault. And if you go read that thing that Charles said, he at the end says, why didn't you tell me that you've already done that? I said, well, it, you made the assumption. You know, it's not for men to assume or presume. I just wanted to have a conversation with him. I never asked you to remove the uh, uh, the videos from your site. I never did. Never once asked him. I, it wasn't, wasn't a conversation about me. And each one of you know 
that come here. And while we're talking about the, the fish and the thing that happened in Carl Roberts knows that each week, every week, guys, every week, and I make this a point, every week I expose what's wrong with me. I don't expose anybody else on this channel. I expose what's wrong with me. And when I when I when I bring the judgment to the house of God first, when I stop casting doubt everywhere else, and when I go sit and my conscience is finally clear, then I live I'm living in love. All right? And as Christ have also loved us and have given ourselves for an offering and sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor, but fornication and all uncleanness, covetousness, let it not be once named among you, as becometh saints, neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know, that no 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 whoremonger, clean, unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater, hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Okay, so this kingdom of Christ and of God is one place. All right, so but let's uh, identify the idolatry here. So this is going to bypass uh, most people's deal. And they go making things like books. They make the paper, little Jackie paper. They make this their idol. That is not an idol, folks. Hey, man, I have put my laws in my hearts and where? In, in their hearts and in their minds, right? Because men change words. Me and Sister Main, Maniacs is in here. We go back and forth to the Geneva and the KJV where King Jimmy's changed words, right? It's not that I don't have a complete love of the Bible. I know men are wicked. They change words. Right, so an idolater is one who knows where the kingdom of heaven is. A non-idolater, I mean, you know where the kingdom of heaven is. Well, if you're worshiping something external, you're an idolater because it doesn't speak, it doesn't hear, it doesn't see, it doesn't taste, it doesn't touch. That's an idol. That's paper. It, it's whatever you want it to be. It's not. You, I am the way, the truth, the life. So let no man deceive you with vain, useful, useless words. For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be you not partakers with them. For now, this is important. For sometimes you were darkness. Well, that's right. We were mixed in equity, right? So let's do that. Let's do that again. In equity, it's a deviation. It's in, not equity. A quietus. Equity, it's right there. Can y'all see that? Can y'all see that? Said it. Well, here we go. Born again, let's talk about that. Are you supposed to just worship God on one day a week? Do you honor your father or mother one day a week? When is the Sabbath? Well, here's the thing, though, right? So you've made that right in your mind, just like my sister uh, Maniacs believes that to be so, and she goes all week long preparing for that day. I wake up every day, and every day is to the Father. Every day. That's me. I said it. I said it. And there's only one present time now. Uh, the completion, right? Six days I have worked, and seventh day I completed. What do you think you completed? Completed you. Right, it's the completed of creation. I give, I give, I give, give unto holy every day. All right, so that's just my my opinion. I have no issue with that neither. Have none. Let no man just deceive you with vain words. But you were sometimes darkness, but now are you light in the Lord? Walk as children of light. And I just want to say this right now too: the Son of Man, Son of Man, is Lord of the Sabbath. All right, y'all go find that and figure out who the Son of Man is when he says that. You just go figure it out. I guarantee you, most people have no earthly idea who the who the Son of Man is, but you do. You have an idea because we went through it. For the fruit of spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. So there only is one day. So let's do that, right? There only is one day. There's that you know everybody wants to do that, but there's only there's only now. You know, there's only in this present moment is the only thing that ever is. So why are you living for something tomorrow when you should be doing your best now? Right. We, we got to get these ideas, uh, this this whole and there's many layers of the Bible, guys. There's many layers of the Bible. But every day, every single day is a day I give to the father. 
It's a day that I spend all day wrapped around this concept. I'm consumed by these con these th these thought processes now. Uh, but while I'm uh, consumed, I'm actually at the finally I'm finally able to stop and smell the ro roses. And what that means is I can enjoy life again because I realize most of the stuff is out of my control, right? And I no longer want to control it. I just want to control my mindset, my heart, and be the best I can be every day and love everybody continually, right? That's it. That's all I want to do. So let's get back to that. For the, spru the fruit of the Spirit is all goodness, righteous, and truth, proving what is acceptable in the Lord. And then have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. So what people go is, oh, man, you can't have any fellowship with anybody else. But, hey, where do where'd the works of darkness come from? It comes from you because it's done of them in secret. It's the next day. For it is shame even to speak of those things which are done to them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. So everything reproved, reproved, that means accused, condemned, is made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. So the only way something can be manifest in the reality is for you to, I'm the light that lights the life of men. All right. So it is the spirit that giveth life. Okay. So the only way anything is manifest into your reality is by you thinking it. And it's a, it's, that's right. That's right. So if, if you are constantly manifesting things in your reality of a teetotal nature and a tyrannical nature, well, guess what's going to keep happening to you? You're, you've, you've built everything. Hold on. Everything that I feared has come upon me. Uh, Job, let's do that. I know that's Job 30 something. I can't remember which one it is, though. Everything I feared has come upon me. Everything I, everything I, I'm trying to remember what it is. Uh, I can't remember. Everything I have feared has come upon me. Everything that I feared has come upon me. Oh, there it is. Okay. I found it. Let's see. Everything I have feared has come upon me. It's I want to say it's four, but it doesn't seem like it. Hold on, guys. Give me a second. Ever. I know that's what it is. Job three. I was in Job uh, four. I'm sorry, guys. Now give me a second. Let me catch up. That was Job. I was in Job four, and I should have been in Job three. All right. Okay. So this is this is this is the truth. Okay. Uh, why is light given to a man whose way is hid and whom God hath hedged in? For my sighing cometh before I eat, and my roarings are poured out like the waters. For the thing which I greatly feared is come upon me, and that which I was afraid of is come unto me. I was not in safety, neither had I rest, neither was I quiet, yet trouble came. Right? So we'll go right here. You are not lying down next to the green pastures. You are not being led besides the still waters. Your soul is not restored because you still live in fear, shame, guilt. All these ideas that are schoolmasters to get you to the next stage. Okay? And you have not figured out where the holy mount is and you're not figured you have not figured out who's dwelling in the holy hill and as such you you have you have forgotten your way now everything in the bible is is purpose to bring you to that next point you can't go to you cannot skip b on your way to c guys you can't do it it's impossible we keep talking about that uh, because it takes you got to go through uh, being a beast of nature. You got to be going uh, ignorant by necessity. And that's the way of Caesar. Right. And then you got to get up to uh, where you, you you learn a little bit from experience. Then you get to reason. And then once you get to reason, you get spirituality. OK. And that next step of st uh, stage of spirituality is when you stop allowing the outside world to press in on you. Right. You don't you don't allow it. So you remember that the last thing that we want to be 
is one who spends all their time accusing and blaming. Okay? And the reason for that is we do not want to be accuser of the brethren. Right? 12.7. And that's all you do is spend your time accusing the brethren. Revelation 12.7. Mm-hmm. And here it is, 12.10, right here. And I heard a Lord, loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation, strength, and the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which ac accused them before our God day and night. This mindset, this uh, psychopathic, and it's really prevalent in today's society. Uh, you'll notice this when I say this. Everybody blames everybody else for their problems, right? No one accepts moral, moral responsibility. Um, so what they do is they accuse day and night and you have to bring that guy down because that's the adversary. That's the adversary that lives within. And, you know, I can't help that people don't want to face that music that they are the, the arbiter of their, their number one problems, but they have to. Yeah, that's right. Hey, hey uh, again, and that's truth seeking him. That's true. All right. So that is it, guys. That is all I have. I'm going to take a little bit of time off, and the reason for that is not because I don't love everybody here. You know, I've got to recharge. And, you know, this this idea uh, that I have, I struggle with, right? I struggle with this idea right here at the top of your page. And the reason for that is I'm still having to tell the truth to myself that not everybody is, 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 is uh, my purpose and goal of saving. So I started the YouTube channel with big ideas, right? My big ideas was, was we're going to wake the world up. The truth is, is that I've had to come to grips with that, that, that reality. That's not the case. Um, and what, what, what I've had to come to deal with is that uh, Brandon shouldn't spend all his time trying to save everybody else. It, it just, it's impossible to do that. And what happens is if I don't take breaks uh, from, from the Bible study, and from uh, from from this, I get wore down. That's like the first guy I showed y'all tonight. And this is remember, it's always reflection of me. Let's go look at that. I want y'all to see it. I want y'all to see it. I replied to this guy right down here. Uh, let's see. It's gone. I deleted it. And I was very ugly. I was horribly ugly. There's no reason why I should have been that ugly. And then when I saw it, I was like, hey, man, why am I, why am I let this dude get on my nerves? And he's right. He's right. He says it right there. You know, I, he did. But that was his intentions in the first place, in the first place. But I did. I let it get on my nerves, and I shouldn't have. And that's when I knew that I needed to uh, do. <laughs> I, I, need a, I need a vacation. That is truth, maniacs. That is true. Hey, hey, now I want y'all to know right now. Uh, y'all see, y'all don't, y'all don't know how, how close me and this lady is. Uh, this is my friend from Maine, uh, and dude, we 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 have some disagreements. We do. We have some disagreements in scripture and everything else from time to time. But she knows she knows my heart, and I know her heart, and we're working towards the same goal. Yes. I thought I saw Sierra in here. Thank you, Sierra. I thought I saw you. Yeah, and you know that's a Barry W. That's a that's a perfect point. That's a perfect point because I've had to come to I've had to come to grips with that. Okay, and so that's one of the things that I have yet. I, I I'm starting to let go. Right. I'm starting to let go. And, and let's do that. Uh, cast not your pearls before swine. That's Matthew. 
um, seven, right? Or is it Matthew six? Matthew seven. All right, I thought so. Uh, you see, guys, I've, I've, I've memorized. Hey, I don't know if y'all have noticed, but I've memorized a lot of this Bible. Uh, <laughs> right? I've memorized a lot of it. And uh, I'm going to tell you, it's 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 crazy when I think about how much of this this Bible I have in my mind and just how five, six, five, six years ago, I couldn't retain 10, 10 words. All right. So here we go. Let's read this together. Judge not that you be not judged. OK, so what measure you meet must be measured again unto you. So. If I live in a glass house and I have not perfected uh, my my righteousness, then I have no reason uh, to uh, judge my brother. So if I'm a fornicator and idolater, I have no reason to judge somebody else that's a fornicator and idolater. Do we get that? Do we understand that concept? Uh, so if if I have removed the, the log from my eye, well, then I can start helping someone else. That's why I have, I have uh, put considerable amount of effort into exposing my uh, myself, and let's go. Let's let's go here. Um, you know that's why that's why we've done that. We've got to keep we got to keep keep uncovering what's wrong within us. Hey, born again veteran, you know you know you're my brother. Judge not that you be not judged, for with what judgment you judge, you shall be judged, and with what measure you meet, it shall be measured to, measured to you again. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considereth not the beam that is in thine own eye? Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, let me pull out the mote of thine eye, and behold, a beam is thine own, don't I? So this is the one thing I don't ever want to be. So I am very aware of, Jude uh, aware of Judaism. I'm very aware of Catholicism. I'm very aware of all the denom many denominations that divide the house, okay? Uh, a house divided cannot be, right? Cannot. All right, cannot stand. And uh, we'll do that individual in just a second. Matter of fact, let's go ahead. So what makes you an individual is only one thing. And I'm not talking about law words. All right, so in in Latin is not, individual is divided, not divided. Y'all see that? So if you want to be an individual to God, it means you're not in equity. You're, you're, you're not divided, uh, single. You're, 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 you're united as one individual. And so this this idea uh, is is what allows you to not be a hypocrite when you've made the eye single, right? You've made the eye single. There's the two have been made one, and you're no longer hypocritical about everybody else. You've actually unified everything. First, cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the mote of thy brother's eye. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast your pearls before swine lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you. And here we go again, folks, this Kikoro, and I don't know if y'all y'all listened to Kikoro or not or uh, read his stuff. He's got some really good stuff. Remember, I'll always add to anybody else's. Remember the beast by nature, they will turn around and rend you, man. And the guy that is ignorant by necessity for his job, he's just doing what he told. He's an older follower, right? And the few that are experienced, uh, and of less understanding, the only thing they're going to know is whether they can profit or uh, or unprofit from it, right? It is only the very highest, the very few, the 1% of the 1% that are instructed by reason, and even less than that, they go into the spiritual world. So make no mistake about this, the odds that you're up against and trying to stay positive in the face of these things. And then at the same time, what you're doing is you're taking in attacks because that, that that's just how it, that's how it is. Um. <laughs> All right, so hey, let's let's get into the chat room and and shut my mouth up for a minute. Let's get in that chat room and say hello to everybody. Um, let's take that my big big head down. Let me get in here. Hold on, guys. Let me put the other chat up and let's talk. Anybody got any questions? Uh. Oh, hey, symbology. A Sierra, that's the that's the purpose of it is to, is to take away our, our joy, right? Uh, they want to do that. Troy Revis, um, hey guys, I, I'll probably be back with a um, <laughs> I'll probably be back with a with a deal next week. You know, I love sharing this stuff. 
uh, uh, I do. Shinry, I see you. Um, yeah, we did fine. We had some wind. Uh, lights went out for a little while. Oh, hey, Matthew Gonzalez, where have you been, bro? I hope you're doing okay. Uh, lights went out for a little while. Uh, B. Sibley, uh, here. Sibley. At gmail.com. How about that? Uh, so, so Jeremy, let me, let me answer Jeremy if I can get, pull that up. Um, so man, I just don't care. <laughs> I mean, everything's false to me. I don't watch, I don't watch any of it anymore. I mean, you go on before it's news and you think the world's ending tomorrow. Uh, you watch all these doctors and everything out there putting out false information. And, you know, nobody is saying, Hey, Hey, how about this folks? They stole an entire year from mankind. What are you worried about? At what point are y'all going to say, hey, I can't get back that one year? I mean, I just don't get, I just don't get the masses. They're not going to wake up from their bread and circus. So, I mean, uh, what's going to happen to the masses is going to happen to the masses. It is what it is. It's been going on. Uh, matter of fact, here, let's do this. Um, let's go read Kikoro in, in, in Rome. All right. Uh, do not blame Caesar. You know, I want to read this to y'all. Just know that he died in B.C., okay? Do not blame Caesar. Blame the people of Rome who have so enthusiastically acclaimed and adored him and rejoiced in their loss of freedom and danced in his path and gave him triumphal processions. Blame the people who hail him when he speaks in the form of the new wonderful good society, which shall now be Rome, interpreted to mean more money, more ease, more security, more living fatly at the expense of the industrious. There's nothing new underneath the sun, folks. All has been that shall be. And so to sit around and worry about these things and let somebody else sit in the kingdom of heaven is no longer something that I do. I don't watch fear porn. I don't watch uh, anything. It's just, it's everything is so fake to me. Uh, and, and the reason why that, that is, is because when I see somebody speak and I don't see them speak from a spiritual aspect, uh, uh, in uh, uh, knowing that all the other junk, the stage that they're at is is I'm no longer there, so I can't I can't I can't connect with them anymore. I can only connect with people that are growing at, at my same place. You get what I'm saying? It's not an arrogance or a pride or anything like that. It's just that I see through those layers of bullcrap now, and so I, I I don't get stuck on them, uh, and now I just I just live. Yeah, it is. What do you mean, Matthew? <laughs> uh, Brother Gregory and I have a little bit of a slight difference. I love the man. Uh, his holy church. He's got a bunch of great ideas. Uh, I have a, we've talked on the phone uh, and we have a slight difference of opinion of the, the whole mass deal and uh, where we draw the line of accepting uh, the encroaching on, on our, uh, uh, on our livelihood. Uh, and maybe I may be wrong about it, but uh, I could be wrong. Uh, but, you know, maybe I don't know. And, Really, he can only get due on Fridays. And to be honest, guys, I only do live streams when I have the time. I usually only have one day a week. I do have two two kids, and I do have a full-time job. Every Everything that we give here is completely free while I'm trying to fight a case in the federal courtroom. It's, it's just struggle, man. I just don't have much time. I really don't. I don't have much time. Nailed. What did I nail now, brother? Did I miss something? He said, "Yeah, yeah." You see that searching for truth? That's what I do. I just. 
Oh, no. Not at all. Not at all. I'm sending the next notice tomorrow. I give her five days on the first one, and I'm going to send her another one tomorrow by certified mail. Uh, we're going to do the administrative process. That is that is the truth, Dylan. Well, here's the thing, though, right? So Yahushua said, uh, uh, a wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. Hey, listen, I know from conscience and reason that I shouldn't be covering the breath of life. Uh, so it's it's way further uh, than just just a symbol to me, right? It, it's just it's just it's just something instinctively that even I've heard people on here say that it that it's taken a piece of their soul, and uh, you know it's just it's just against conscience and reason, and anything against conscience and re reason to the only property that's yours, and that's the te the house and temple of God, that goes against everything, man. It's just like the vaccines and why people are worried to death about five G and everything else, but they don't see it on the same spectrum, right? They all freak out about all this stuff, all this other invisible stuff, but then and go put on a real tangible piece that destroys them, right? That they know it know, know it makes them sick. And this thing's okay, but worry about 5G over here. Worry about 5G, something you can't see. And all the white papers that they've put out by Deborah Tavares and everybody else that, that speak and talk about death camps and everything else could be false, could not be false. Who knows? I don't know. And then I don't know anything. Uh, it's just crazy. <laughs> there you go, Eric. You better get running t uh, changes out the temple. I like the Pied Pipers, Ryan Pope Joy. That's a good book. Uh, it, everything, a lot has changed since then. Okay, remember they they alter. Uh, as the remedies come, they alter and everything else. But remember, if you're seeking remedy at the local and state level, you'll probably never get it. We're about to find out if there's any at, at the federal level. We're going to find out. Um, you know, I, that, that, that again, uh, it's all about lessons, right? Uh, Paper Arrows is an excellent book if you haven't read it. Uh, Rulers of Evil by Tupper Salzy is another great book that is a must read. It gives you the introduction to the uh, uh, city of Washington, D.C. and how it started as, as a replica of Rome. Um, and, and these ideas. Uh, but really, dude, I just read my Bible now, uh, to be honest. And I read some, I read some philosopher stuff philosophical stuff. Uh, I love uh, Spooner. I like Bastat. Uh, I like F uh, Fyodor uh, Dostoevsky. Um, Tupper, T-U-P-P-E-R, The Rulers of Evil. It's a very good book. Um, the only thing he misses out is on, on the Jews and their, their role in, uh, in Rome. But listen to me, folks. People don't get this. People people want to separate Rome and Jews, in which Jewry uh, seeks to kill uh, uh, the, the Messiah for a reason. The Jewry seeks to kill the Messiah because they are of the world. They are the beast of nature. Uh, so everybody wants to go, well, it's just one, one tip. No, the Jews are the world. The world is around you, man, at all times. I've got Jews in my family. And what I mean by that is not Jews that come from Israel. My brother, hey, he would he would kill me dead for a crack rock. You know what I mean? I mean, it, it just not right now. I'm just saying when, he's, when he was on that stuff real bad, he, he would have, right? Uh, and, and the Jews are the world. Jewry seeks to kill the spirit because it doesn't understand it. Uh, so Edom, 
uh, the hairy man, uh, Rome, uh, the empire of the Edomites is the uh, Roman empire, uh, which is a great book shows the connections between that's another good book. If you, if you have a scholarly uh, viewpoint, the Roman empire, the empire of the Edomite uh, proves to you the one-to-one -one correlation between Latin, Greeks, uh, Sanskrit, and uh, uh, Hebrew. Daniel Moore. Well, you can. It depends on which judge you get. It depends on what judge you get, but the uh, local and uh, state courts are uh, kangaroo courts. Uh, I'll give family a little bit more time than I do everybody else, but they've got to show some interest. They have to show some interest, right? Yeah, Tavares is in the club, guys. Well, yeah. Well, uh, so no strings on me. Uh, make no mistake that uh, all these languages are, are tied together, uh, you know. Uh, and what they've been doing since time immemorial, that's why when somebody says it's the inspired word of God without error, they lied to themselves because there's errors all in these translations. Um uh, and and that's that's just the truth. So we can't lie to ourselves and, and say there's no errors because there's so much a difference from one book to the other. Which one's the uh, inspiring? People go, it's the KJV only. Well, I use the Geneva in many spots in place of the KJV because it's it's better translated. It has it has a better context, and that's the 1560 Geneva, uh, and that's in uh, uh, that's in Middle English or is that Old English? It's one of the two. It's either Old English or Middle English. It's uh, but uh, your user V's and everything else, you have to learn how to read uh, that way. Uh, so these ideas that they have controlled the printing press, it goes on uh, uh, in perpetuity. They, they control and uh, they give us what we want. I mean, not what we want. They give us what they want. All right, guys. So we went a long time tonight. Uh, I probably made some people, people, uh, well, yeah, there, that's, that's a simple truth right there too. No, I don't think I've read the secret letter of James. I have read, uh, uh, oh man, I've read a bunch of them. I can't recall any of them off the hand, off my hand right now. I will tell you this, the book of Thomas is, is what helped me, uh, understand, uh, the, the making the eye single. Uh, making the two into one. Uh, and now, now I can't see it. I can't not see it all over the Bible. And the book of Thomas was the, in the book of Thomas is just a uh, Proverbs. That's all it is. The book of Thomas is just ancient Proverbs. It's, it's attributed to Thomas, but who knows who wrote it? It's just, it's just Proverbs. Uh, but it's, it was good. Who's that, Gavin? Who uses scriptures more than anybody else? Good thing, Carlos. I don't know anything about the Copper Scroll. So what I want to say this. So right. So one of the things that I've learned, Amy, is and, and I'm, not, I'm, I'm not I wasn't being ugly there. One of the things that I've learned is when people tell me uh, that that's this is so and so and that so and so and this is bad and this is good and this is how you interpret this and this is how you interpret that. I read it anyway. Uh, I can discern what's good and bad. Uh, that is what the fruit of the spirit is. It gives you. Uh, hey, anybody that knows something, when they read something rotten from the pits of hell, in your stomach comes comes a knot that goes, this ain't right. Well, the same thing goes when I read something that's of the spirit. The hairs on the back of my neck stand up. I go, whoa, 
I get this concept. Yeah, this 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 is pretty good. Same thing, folks. Hey, at this stage in the game, at this stage in your awakening process, uh, those who just sit around and label everything, uh, most of those people don't have no clue what they're talking about, right? It's it's like the people who had no clue about the Bible walking in and saying, well, the Bible, but the Bible's just about, you know, church, going to church, paying your tithes, everything else. They have no clue what the Bible's about. They have no clue. <laughs> That's it, top feed. That's it. That's all. You just got to ask the question and then prove it. That's it. And I, guys, for real, I stick with the the two the two books I read the most. If everybody if everybody was to pin me down right now and say, Brandon, what book do you read the most? Uh, well, folks, that book's gonna be the book of Matthew and the book of John. Okay. <laughs> I read the book of Matthew over and over and over again in the book of John. I'm starting to really like Luke too. Cause I'm seeing, starting to uh, see some things in Luke that I never saw before. No, I was being sorry. Uh, Amy, I was being, I, I felt like I was, uh, I was coming off as being sarcastic. Not you, sweetheart. Not you. I thought, I thought, I thought I said your name with a slight undertone. Not you. You didn't do anything. It was me. All right, guys, let's close this thing out. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for anointing this messenger tonight. Hey, listen, we want to say a prayer uh, for Brother uh, Macchiata Ch uh, Chihuahua um, and uh, Brother Carl Roberts out there who thinks that his entire life is focused on exposing everyone else as charlatans and everything else when he should be pulling the beam out of his own eye. We want to, we want to ask that this brother uh, come, come before you in honor and in truth and recognize that name calling, slandering and division and disassembly uh, uh, disassemblers shall not uh, partake in the kingdom of heaven. And uh, what we want to do is ask this brother uh, find some peace and sanctity in, within and quit looking without to find all his answers. Uh, Father, we, we ask all this in, in, in the precious name and let thy word not return into the void, but let it accomplish that which you please and prosper in everything and everywhere that you send it. In your precious son's name we pray. Hey guys, I love y'all. And um, I just want y'all to know it's, uh, it's, hey Sierra, we pray for you too. Okay. And listen guys, I hope everybody gets that, uh, that this the purpose of this was to to grow. Let's not find anybody over on uh, these brothers and stuff going on. And uh, y'all have a blessed night. I love y'all.